Metropolitan Stadium, Bloomington, Minnesota, the halftime score, 10 to nothing, and this was the final play of the half with the Vikings leading by that 10 to nothing count. Roman Gabriel over his center, Kenny Iman, for the second time in a row, virtually at the goal line, a back keeper, for the second time in a row, not getting past the Purple Gang. And the frustration will probably live with the Rams throughout the halftime period. What a job for a coach to get a team back up after that kind of disappointment. Three shots they had from inside the three-yard line. They couldn't put it across after the great break on the punt return by Kermit Alexander. Ten to nothing, Minnesota. Now, as is our usual procedure at halftime every Monday night, Through the courtesy of NFL Films, the highlights of some of the key games of the recent weekend. And so let's pick up with that. Pre-game festivities at Kansas City. The Super Chiefs about to take on the Dallas Cowboys. It's early in the first quarter. First time the Chiefs have the ball, they recover the Dallas fumble on the Dallas 31. Lenny Dawson hits number 30, Gloucester Richardson, who goes out on the Dallas 5. And just three plays later, the handoff goes to Ed Podolak out of Iowa. He sweeps right in behind good blocking by Mo Mormon. And the Chiefs have a 7 to nothing lead over the Cowboys. Calvin Hill sidelined with back problems. Wayne Thomas becomes the workhorse. Number 33, watch him go. All the way in for the touchdown. Dallas assumes a commanding lead of 20 to 10. That young man has a tremendous potential. Wayne Thomas. Now this is the next time the Cowboys have possession. A screen pass from Craig Morton to Dwayne Thomas again. Thomas bolts down the sideline. And nobody's going to get him this time either. An apparent touchdown. 72-yard play. But only apparent. Cowboys detected holding the ball call back. This didn't deter Morton. It's just two plays later. Craig finds the incomparable speedster, the former Olympic champion, Bob Hayes, who has no trouble outracing Emmett Thomas. This was a game that Dallas commanded. Kansas City mustered two later field goals. The final score, Dallas 27, Kansas City 16. Now, this is Detroit at Chicago. Wrigley Field. The two met earlier in a game covered by ABC, and this one began the same way as the earlier one, with Concannon looking for and finding Dick Gordon, who beat Glenn Barney for the third time this year. And quickly, the Bears have a surprising 7 to nothing lead. The Bears had momentum, it seemed, in the first half. Detroit mustered a field goal. Now with the score 7 to 3, Concannon finds George Farmer, and that's number 20. Lynn Barney beaten again. Farmer goes all the way down to the four yard line. Bears seem ready to take full control of the ball game, but you see the fumble. It's covered by the Lions. And so the first half ended. Bears 7, the Lions 3. Now, Detroit moved to 7 to 6 in the second half, and this became the big play. Quarterback Billy Munch. A perfect strike to Earl McCullough, the fleet footed wide receiver who forced Olympic action in order to play professional football. And so, in a bruising game, Detroit hung on for a 16 to 10 victory. Closer than expected, but still a victory. That's Philadelphia Eagles coach Jerry Williams. He saw his team jump in front of Green Bay at Milwaukee with an early field goal, 3 to nothing. But the rookie quarterback, Rick Arrington, number 11, is to have his troubles. An interception by Doug Hart, number 43 of the Packers. And Doug returns the ball 76 yards for a Packers score, putting the pack in front, 7-3. to three. They were in front to stay. Dale Livingston had a field goal. That made it 10-3, to three, but after the kickoff, watch this return by Billy Wallace. He finds that one hole that's necessary, speeds down the sideline. He's being chased by young Ken Ellis, the rookie from Southern University, who finally drives him out of bounds, but it was an 82-yard return to the Green Bay 15. 
Now it's third and five on the ten. Rick Arrington throws for Gary Ballman. The ball hits him squarely on the back of his jersey, and that same number 48, Kenny Ellis, picks it off and starts back upfield. He goes in all 60 yards into Eagles territory before going out of bounds. Back is drive stop. They were ahead 17 to 3, and then Norm Sneed, number 16, took over for the Eagles, threw that pass to Ben Hawkins, who flipped the tackler, lost his helmet, but found himself alone, and Ben goes into the score. That made it 17 to 10. That Ben Hawkins can run some, too. Now the Eagles are still driving. They try for a field goal by Mosley, but it's partially blocked by Bobby Jeter, number 21, and that's Doug Hart, who had a great day looking to break that tackle. Number 43, he returns the ball all the way to the Green Bay 45. Doug Hart, one of the veterans, going back to the old Lombardi days at Green Bay. Now number 15, Bart Stark. He throws to Rick McGeorge, the rookie tight end from Little Elon College in Carolina. McGeorge goes in for the touchdown and the final score. Green Bay 30, Philadelphia 17, a win for Phil Bengston. St. Louis Garden at Yankee Stadium against the New York football giants. They should have called it Fran Tarkenton Day. This is in the early going, their third play from scrimmage. A perfect strike from Tarkenton to number 18, Clifton McNeil, acquired from San Francisco. Earlier with Cleveland, came from Grambling College. Now Tarkenton's ready for the first touchdown of the game. Number 88, Aaron Thomas, the veteran end, corrals it in the end zone. The Giants lead 7 to nothing. St. Louis got a field goal to make it 7 to 3, and then Fran, number 10, went to work again. He hits his tight end, number 38, Bob Tucker, who had a great day. That made it 14 to 3, Giants. Now Dawkinson's at it again. Seemed like a broken record. He hit 10 out of 10 passes in the first half. This is just the third time the Giants had the ball, and it was a perfect heave to Clifton McNeil. So it became 21 to 3. In the second half, Dawkinson led up only slightly. This one is to Bob Tucker. It's another touchdown. And amazingly, the Giants had upset St. Louis 35-17. to St. Louis now in a four-up and two-down tie with the Dallas Cowboys. 